So the first step to correct your status would be, I would create something called a non-taxpayer affidavit or even something called um, political status correction. Name, correct your name for the record. You, When your name was created on a birth certificate, they think they own this. So you have to learn how to create it in a private trust. The social security number is a trust. If you look it up, Social Security Trust Administration. It's a public administration. You have to learn how to create your private administration. So you can start with a church or even um, a tribe. You can correct your status with a tribe, a church. Um, it's called the Shahada with Muslims. I'm not sure what it's called with Jewish people, but they all undergo a status change. In the Christian community, it's called being baptized. So your baptismal certificate can be also correct your status, and you can use this um, to identify in the public. Everybody go to OnlyFans.com slash Don Kalam. That's OnlyFans.com slash Don Kalam. That's D-O-N-K-I-L-A-M. You can subscribe there and get access to Don Kalam University at DonKalam.com. You can also follow me on the Instagram at D-O-N underscore K-I-L-A-M. Again, that's D-O-N underscore K-I-L-A-M. Much peace and love. <laughs> She bad. She bad now streaming on all music platforms. Uh, I always know I don't know when I'm out of town, she makes time in the game. Even though this land was in the game, he can't do what I am. Peace and love, y'all. Peace and love. Thank you so much, man. We deserve it. She might have, feel that he ain't taking the place. That's the only one, but this D, she embraced it. Even though I'm not a man, I'll make her understand. Price tag on your head. Yep, yeah, shot a couple of rounds. Peace and love, y'all. Peace and love, man. Peace and love. Let me turn this off. She bad. By Don Kalam streaming on all music platform. Be sure. Be sure to stream this shit. All right. She bad. By Don Kalam. On all major music platforms, make this shit go platinum. You feel me? Make this shit go platinum. Okay, okay. I got all the bands. I don't know about two, but she bad. Yeah, yeah, she bad. Peace of love, peace of love.
Yeah. So they fucks with the music. I appreciate that, man. Oh, don't you play with it? Oh, no, I'm naked. Yeah, no, I can hit the notes, huh? Peace and love, y'all. Peace and love. I'm recording this too. Everybody decided to join the Zoom class. But look, man, peace and love, man. Hey, look, let me know if you got some questions. I see we on the OnlyFans. We on the Instagram. This is really what's supposed to for the Instagram subscribers. You know what I'm saying? The Instagram subscribers. Push is she bad? And so out on all music major platforms, man. She bad. Don Kalam, just look, just look it up, man. Just look it up. You feel me, man? But I'm here for y'all, but I'm here for y'all tonight. Questions and answers. Questions and answers. You know what are y'all having problems with? So I'm seeing today. I had one person that was really at the beginning. He's just like, he needs clarity of life, you know? I appreciate that. He said he's been putting people in my music. So like, I'm I have the person I see else. in here. Hey, peace and love. Yeah, yeah, you only one in here. What's up with you? How you feeling? How you feeling, Christine? You gone? You was there, then you was gone? This thing. <laughs> hey, how you feeling? How you feeling? I can hear you. You don't want to talk today? Uh, great, thank you. I'm saying we can go over your situation right now because I can hear your voice. You got any questions? Do you need me to? No, I it? don't at this time. I've been studying for over a year, and I came across your books, and they are very uh, intriguing. Which book did would you say is intriguing? I've got eight of your books. I was the one that posted on the messaging. Oh, uh, which one? I got on the Instagram. Okay, okay. Well, we, we appreciate your support. What'd you start learning with? What what brought you to this information? Um, I started with Brandon Joe Williams, and then I started learning from a, a bunch of other people, like um, the uh, um. James Levitt and um, Christopher Hauser and um, a, a few other people. All right. So here's my word of advice. I can't tell you what to do, especially if you're married. You know what I mean? You got to I'm not married. Up. No. And I will okay, not get so. married because I know what that does. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I mean, though. So like my thing is just pick one person and stick with them because you got everybody planting seeds when you're the soil and you're not going to know which way to grow. That's what I've realized. And, um, yeah. uh, you know, but learning all of that stuff was good because it helped me uh, gather my senses together because everything is so overwhelming. There's so much to learn. I, I literally I literally just like told this person that I'm I'm dealing with, like we're we just thinking about getting intimate and everything. I'm talking about she's beautiful, bad. I'm <laughs> like, no, like, you're not going to be listening to other guys. You're not going to be learning from other guys. Like I'm I'm your guy that you're supposed to be learning from. Yeah. Okay, how many with CT got? What he got going on? So is how's he helping you in your life? Well, he he just give you some gifts. He putting you on. He been putting money in your pocket. So you know what I'm saying. If you want to stick with that class, you want to build something real with me. And it's just that simple. Because you can't. You you just you got to understand. You got other people planting seeds. You uh, you're not gonna know which way to grow. You're just. You, 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 I kind of agree grow. with you there. Yeah, I agree with what, you there because I've, 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 uh, you know, done the classes and then I've still have so many questions and, but I, I learn different things from different people and I, I, I just, I use my common sense to put it together and realize I need more of a foundation. Yes, exactly. That's, that's, that's perfect. It's, it's, it's having a foundation, having something solid, start, just starting somewhere. The first place to get ahead is to get started. That's the first step to get ahead. Does that make sense? Yep. So just get started. But you know, you did get started. You know, now it's just find one 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 place to start. Start with yeah. one family. You know. Yeah, I, I I I stopped dead in my tracks a few months ago and I took a break so that I could process all the information. The only the only thing that I have done um 
is I have uh, updated my driver's license and I have um, filed my form 56 with the IRS and rescinded my voter registration in California and I do not pay taxes anymore. Okay, congratulations. Thank so you. So you're seeing Williams, I like that. I like yeah. that. So you got your own process. So you gotta understand how all them steps you've done, that's your own process. Yes. You know, I never registered a vote, so I don't have to rescind that. <laughs> it don't count anyway. I don't know if it counts. Somebody counting it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's counting it. Somebody yeah. knows your ass is registered to vote, so you was counting. Yeah. You know, you got a social security number, you was counting. But yeah. what I want people to understand this. So look, here's a million dollars worth of game right here. You you understand that social security is a trust, right? Yep. Who created it? The government. So you can only control what you create, right? <laughs> right? Correct? Yes. So why is everybody trying to claim it then? It's not theirs. Exactly. Exactly. So how I, how I operate, this is a million dollars with the game too. You got to understand, like, you know, with Donald Trump, if he's handing stuff down to his family, they're going to say, who created the trust? They're going to say the family, correct? Yes. You know, when you was before you was 18, who could come get you out of jail? <laughs> Your parents. <laughs> All right, then. Family law. So they triumph the judge. So they was your judge. They can come bail you out <laughs> <laughs> on your own recognizance, right or wrong. Yes. And the same way I tell people, they talk about they work, they filed it, they filled out the W-4 and all of that. Like, where, where, where does it say any company policy? Tell me any company policy that says you have to fill out a W-4 to get a job there. No, nowhere. Is that a company policy that they're enforcing IRS rules? <laughs> yeah, no. In fact, I, I just recently got a new job and I did the Form 56 and everything at my last job and then filed the W-8-B-E-N. But they, they were screwing me over and they didn't file the W-8-B-E-N-E. And, and and I left that job and I, I took like five months off of work and just kept studying. And when I got a new job, uh, because I'd already done the, uh, that process, I have I signed up as exempt. And on my I-9 form, I told them that I was not a U.S. citizen and gave them a passport. Everything was good. Gucci. Everything Gucci. was good. Gucci. And the HR lady knew exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> And she's, she looked at me and she said, you know, we may send this off and it may come back. You have to pay taxes. I said, that's okay, because I'll just fix it. Hey, I, I, hey I'm proud of you. Congratulations, because some people will just let one one little failure stop yeah. them from moving forward. No, I just, I know how to move forward if there's a little bump in the road. Well, I've been exempt my whole life, so even before I knew this shit, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always put an exempt on my shit. I ain't never had taxes come out my check, ever. Yeah. But the, I just did what I was told, though. You know how people do, they do everything that they was taught, right? No, people like to be told what to do. <laughs> yeah, so I always did what I was told. I was taught the way I always did my, my forms when I got a job, because I had a job when I was a teenager. Uh -huh. I just did it like I was told. Never had yeah. taxes, okay, none of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> never had any of that. And that's just due to the stuff I was taught. That's why it made sense when I got older. You know, my grandma, she would tell everybody in the family, if you can't pay your bills, just bring them to me. And she'd always write some shit on the back and send that shit right back in. No way. Nobody ever knew what she was doing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so when I started learning this, my grandma was on her deathbed. And I asked her a bunch of questions. She was like, yeah. She just was like, she tried to make me promise not to get certain people out of prison. But she got my <laughs> uncle out of prison out of the Philippines. He, he got, his corpus? He somebody. Yeah, he killed somebody. He was in the green. <laughs> Straight up, man. But yeah, that's... but the, Like, I just want to say I'm proud of you because you didn't give up after the contention. And you, <laughs> you said you took five months off. That's dedication right there. But yeah. that's that's what I had to do. Like I'm not gonna lie to you, I had to give up my whole life and just study. Yeah. Like I I, I had to eat, sleep, and shit it. And like uh, yeah, I'm gonna tell you right now. I've um 
I, I become more of a private person because if you just like try to casually mention any of this stuff to people, they're so brainwashed and they think you're crazy or they get mad because you're destroying their illusion well, of the whole world. Well, you got to understand this is the public sector and the private sector. Yeah. The public sector is part of the, the government, is part of the economy that the government controls. So yeah. when you got the public education, do you know what the endowment is? It's like um, free schooling. So I, if somebody got an endowment to go to uh, school, they would never have to pay for the university or whatever. So the Rockefeller family had an endowment for the public. Yeah. This is why school is free. So all, all this public education is through an endowment through the Rockefeller group. So you understand, you got the public education, you got the private education. Yeah. Private school and then public school. They're not learning the same stuff as you are in public school. Absolutely not, yeah. At, at the age of 13, Jewish people know that they're grown. They're considered grown. Yeah. They already know how to invest. 13. Yep. So you know, it's no, it's no fault of our anybody own. It's just like this is the path we chose. Now we're now we're conscious of the things. Now we gotta learn where we're at with it. So there's three different sectors of of this commerce game. You gotta understand it. You got the public sector, you got the private sector, then you got the voluntary sector. Yeah. And where they got us, they pull us in the private into the voluntary sector, and they're in the public. So right. this is how they get you to gift things to them. Yeah. In the private. Really? And then they put they put something else on the public record and bash you. Yes. But it's just a position. You don't have to take the position. You just create a different position. Yes. One one that limits your liability. Because ownership means obligation. Obligation means ownership. <laughs> so you always want to limit your liabilities. Does that make sense? It does. What led you to Don Colon? Um, probably you showed up in my feed because of all the other uh, uh, pages I was following. Oh, uh, well, shout out to the mother seeds then. <laughs> I came Forget across everything across I said. I came across your book. I bought the first one on Amazon, opened it up, and I was like, oh my gosh. There's the forms and instructions right here. Now I need to find out what he's, uh, you know, what 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 else we need to go do. And then I, the, oh, and no. then I, I I would just every time I had a little bit more money, I bought another batch of books from you. Wow, that's amazing. I I I went to prison. That's how I learned this. I, I spent five years in prison in Damn, Arizona. You sound like a good girl. You went to prison. I'm for talking to an outlaw felon. For five flat. Yeah. For manslaughter. You can still get a job. Why do <laughs> you think you can get a job if you're a felon? I thought felons couldn't get jobs. Oh, absolutely they can. Man, listen, I'm just saying everything's a belief. Yeah, it's just a belief. I, I, I ain't never let any label tell me I couldn't get no money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. What you call me, what you label me, I bet you I'm going to go out here and get something. I'm about, I'm about to make a payday today. We hustlers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how I move. That's how I move. So I like that. I like I like that you told me you had a job first because man, I get some calls. People tell me, they, "Listen, because you know I charge for I could charge for consoles. I ain't gonna say them talk to you for free. I got a whole life." Yeah, but uh, hey, it's still I don't have a life. I'm on the phone all day. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I can't get away. It's like, ah, sometimes I just got to skip a few calls just so I can go eat. <laughs> this is real life. This is my life. Oh. Coaching calls is a form of prison. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, when I was in prison, I, um, people used to pay me to write their, um, you know, for disciplinary. I, I would write their, um, their, um, I would write their affidavits of what had happened to get them out of the, the disciplinary. But I told them, don't ever tell them I'm doing this for you. I don't want them to know who's doing it for you. So you're a jailhouse lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> I spent all my free time in the in the law in the library reading their um their policies and books on, on you know so, how to run the prison. 
so so you agree you're a jailhouse lawyer yeah <laughs> you're one of you're one of those <laughs> yeah that's what you say about me that's what you say about me a, a a, I Plus, I was a, a, a tutor uh, for GED on the Max Yard, and they gave me my own classroom. That's the first time I started teaching. I, I was helping people get their GED. I'm like, bro, I, I, I used to, listen, I just meet them where they at. Yeah. And the first person I ever helped out, this dude was dumb as fuck. I'm not <laughs> even going to lie. This dude was retarded. But I'm like, bro, how, how are you this slow, but yet you got popped with $300,000? Like, bro, right. I at this point in time, I've never seen that type of money in my life. Yeah. So I'm like, bro, what you what did you used to do? He's like, I used to sell dope. I was like, so let's start there. Yeah. How many grams are in the house? You know what I'm saying? Right. Let's learn <laughs> fractions now, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's how I got them. Just meet them where they at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You gotta break it down. You gotta work on their terms and conditions. Cause bro, if you know how to bag up dope, you know how to count money. That's all fractions. Exactly. Shit and percentages, bro. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> teach you, let me teach you what this three fourths is, man. That's a quarter, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just teaching some shit, man. But that's how yeah. I started learning, and that's how I started learning to teach people. And so when it came to this knowledge, it it wasn't nothing to be able to teach it to those type of people because. I've already been there. I've already started at the bottom. I've already t- taught them. Me too. Taught, taught, the, taught the bottom <laughs> the bullshit because you know that's bullshit. If yeah. I'm helping somebody get their GED, that's bullshit. Yeah. Because nigga, he, he didn't need his GED to get that 300000 No. Nope. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and that's how I view life, man. That's when I realized when I started looking at the world differently. Because I knew, no, and no matter, even because listen, I've always been a law-abiding citizen, and I somehow, some way would end up in those situations. So, yeah. you know, if, if I've seen people get money in, I, did you have, could you smoke tobacco where you was at prison? Yeah. Yes. So in the feds, you can't smoke tobacco. Yeah, I know. But you, people are getting tobacco in there. Right. And people taking six and seven figures home off tobacco a year. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about it's just any hustle. I th- that's the first time I seen people in, in jail. Like I nobody when I was in federal penitentiary, nobody sent me money, but I left for money. Mm-hmm. So like I learned how to hustle. I learned, I just learned, I just learned life. Yeah. Learn how to live life, man. It was just different. I was around people that I, birds of a feather flock together. So I'm I'm in there for counterfeit money, but I'm the brokest nigga in there. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had to learn how to hustle, man. But I learned a lot about myself. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a talent. Yeah, and that's when I started learning my talents. That's when I started learning I was a teacher. That's when I started learning this information. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, man. And I I appreciate you sharing that success with us. Thank you. You said you ain't paying shit at work. No. <laughs> so, so they, they no, don't take out no federal income taxes. I got I got my first paycheck and uh you know uh no taxes. So no they, taxes. they they it probably says check with, across. They probably check with the IRS and stuff just to be safe. <laughs> you gave my W eight Ben. Well, I didn't have to because I did that at the last job. I just okay. I was signing up new, so I just signed exempt. Oh, but your job did give them the information though. The last job did give them that information. My last job? Yeah, because you said they wouldn't do it or something. But they did they turn the information no, in? No, my, my last job, they filed my W8 BEN. That first when they looked at it, HR called me and says, I don't even know what this form is. I said, How can you not know? You're a nationwide corporation. I said, if you need to, I'll have the IRS call you and help you, okay? Because they're here to help. <laughs> they figured it out and filed that. But there's it's a two-step process where the company's supposed to file the BENE. And they did not. And they were still taking um, payroll administration fees out of my check, you know? 
when you and already we're read. supposed to be doing that, that and that that means you have clarity of you have you have more clarity than a lot of my students of what's going on. Oh yeah, I would like to think so, but I never uh, you know, pat myself on the back and say I'm better than anyone. <laughs> right, correct. I feel you, I feel you, I understand. But so you're saying that the the W A B E N E that's what they're supposed to file after you file your W A. Yeah, they're they're supposed to file that for them, you know, to the IRS, so they don't have to pay taxes or do the payroll uh, fees. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> that's the reporting entities. I see it. Yeah, yeah I did it. This is the first time me hearing that. And you only have to do the W-A-B-E-N if you are just filing the Form 56, you know? Uh, but I've already filed it. Yeah, that's the one they didn't file. I should have, I should have, you know, filled it yeah, out for copy. them and said, here, just yeah. sign it and send hey, it. sign this right here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that's what you have to do with these people, though. I didn't think so because uh, it was a, a nationwide uh, auto parts dis distribution company and they have 750 warehouses from here to New York, you know? Uh, right? Somebody yeah, dealt with that in that company like though. That. You're right. You're right. But I still like, I always, so even like when I ask the companies to do a 1099 INT or OID, I give them the form to fill out. I'll give them the blank <laughs> form. Yeah. This is my first time really looking at this. Yeah. I never even knew what it was. Now it makes sense. You just taught me something today. Thank you. <laughs> like, that's amazing. That makes sense, though. Yeah. So, they, they have to file that on their own behalf when you file a W-8-B-E-N. And that releases them of their tax liability for me. <laughs> that, makes, that makes total sense. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that form. I never talked about that ever in my life in the public. I've only talked about the W B E N because I use it like a birth certificate. Uh huh. I, I people yes. attach, you can attach this to a landy, a baby landy. Uh huh. And and get a passport. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's what people use to identify. Because the W A B E N is a certificate. Uh huh. It's a foreign. It's showing you a foreign interest certificate. Right. So you could all they need is a certificate, <laughs> right? Like I did. You can use it. You can use a certificate of identity as well. Affidavits of birth, patents and nativity, mm -hmm. baptismal certificates, family Bibles. Yeah. And they can't deny these things. <laughs> <laughs> right. Back, they said back in the 60s and the 70s, damn near everybody used to use a family Bible. Everybody had a family Bible. Right. So Not anymore. We had photo albums. <laughs> we had photo albums when I was a kid. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if the new generation know about photo albums. Huh. I want to I want to go online and buy one of those really, really old Bibles from like the 1700s. <laughs> oh, you put your you put your family heritage in there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know anything about your history? Well, here's my situation. So I I have not proceeded with uh, changing my status. Nobody could answer my questions because I was adopted two weeks before my third birthday. And I remember my adoption. I, I was born in Michigan. And I remember the social worker bringing me to my new home and saying, this is your mommy and daddy. And I'm like, no, the fuck they ain't. <laughs> and uh but i know my birth parents now you do know, i know okay. them personally yes because um, regardless i know at them everybody came from these yeah yeah and and my father who adopted me was an attorney he has my uh, original birth certificate even though it was a, a closed court because he was an attorney so he had his ways okay okay uh, so when I when I started learning this stuff too, my dad flipped the fuck out on me. He got so pissed off because he was a corporate attorney and he had a bar license all these years and he's retired now. And I can't tell you the things he said to me. And I said, you know, you can't talk to me like that anymore. What are you so pissed off about? You know, I'm an adult. 
You can't talk oh, so to he me. Knew, he knows some of this stuff. I think he does, and he's not saying shit. That's why you know it. Yeah, that's why I'm him. learning it. Because it's in your blood. Yeah. That makes a whole lot of sense. Because, look, I hope they say this, this, the sperm cell turns into the brain and the spine, so that's your direct link to the ethers. To the spirit <laughs> one. So the, the things that's on your mind is directly connected to your father. That's my so, adopted father, and he has kind of been my nemesis growing up. Let me tell you, growing up with him was not easy. Uh, anytime I was supposed to be in trouble, anything I said could and was used against me, he would twist it around. Oh, he's a real attorney. He had a trial attorney, man. He's a real life attorney. Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> hey, he got magic powers and don't even know it. That's crazy. <laughs> Does he know he got powers? He does. He, he, he does, does know. Because... You know attorneys are magic. They practice magic. Whether yes. they know it or not. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. Someone asked me, how do I use my baptismal certificate? Use it just like she used her W-A-B-E-N. Uh, did, yeah. did you give any identification with your W-B-E-N? Or did you no, just I... turn it I just turned it in because uh, when I first had that job, they already had my identification. And my identification was U.S. citizen at that time when I first got hired. Does using a baptismal certificate over a birth certificate, does that concept make sense to you? Yes. So how would you do that for the people so we can try to make this make sense for them? How would you do it? Because listen, didn't nobody tell you how to do a W-A-B-E-N. You it took some information and you tried it. You tried to apply the knowledge and it worked for you. It didn't work the first time. You had some contention. No, I, 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 I filled it out according to, uh, you know, a couple of the people I was learning from. And I filled it out as a beneficiary. But nobody walked you through it? What? But nobody walked you through this, correct? Uh, Brandon walked me through it and okay. uh, James C. Levitt did on, on their classes. That's tight. But so what so with a birth certificate, just with your knowledge right now, how would you how would you identify with it? I mean, uh, not a birth certificate, a baptismal certificate. I don't know. I don't have one. So me personally, you just use it in place of a <laughs> if they ask for a birth certificate, you use the baptismal certificate. Uh, I guess I would need to get baptized, but it's not gonna be in a damn church. I mean, I mean <laughs> Did your mom break? Did her water break? So that's your first baptismal right there. Oh, yeah, I'm still very close sense? with my biological mother. That's a, yeah, when you when her water breaks, that's the first baptism. You get baptized in the water. That's why they call them contractions. This is your first contract with God. Uh-huh. It's as above, so below. So all they do is try to duplicate what just happened. Okay. All they do is try to take your what your the gifts that what they do is play God on earth. Let's put it like that. Yeah. So what God's really doing is as above, so below. The contracts and the, and the agreements you have with the universe and God, or whatever you want to call your higher power, I believe source goes by many names. That's mm -hmm. what these people do. Okay. Is duplicate it and then make you chase shadows that's not even yours. These ain't even your real shadows because you chasing paper. <laughs> hey, yeah. you chasing you chasing the paper version of you. It's, it's just like a phone. It's a form of a black mirror. It's magic. Uh huh. So if I give you a piece of paper, say take him to jail, you take him to jail based on what you believe this piece of paper, what you program, what this piece of paper is supposed to say, that's a form of magic. It's curved lines and dots. That's sacred right. geometry. Spell right. and spell casting. I just broke down a lot, but you understood it. That's tight. Yeah. It's in, it's in your blood, though, whether it's adopted or not. That's your family, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You part of the charm family. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, all you gotta do now you gotta be the leader. You gotta tell them we don't do we gonna get this shit together. I, I to. want to. <laughs> you don't want you gotta tell them what it is because guess what? This I'm is a man's to. world, but who creates a man? A woman does. A man's <laughs> from a woman. Yeah. So John stands for dreams obey narrators or deciding on now because now it creates tomorrow, but you write the story. Right. So you can write it on paper, especially with attorneys. They're spellbound. Yes, they are. 
and an unrebutted affidavit stands as truth if it's not if it's not if, if they don't un, they don't rebut the affidavit. The affidavit stands as true, correct? Correct. So you just got to stamp up a no a affidavit behind his back. You're put correct. You need point by point. Put it in the in the judgment box with God. You're correct. God can judge me. Hey, I'm just trying to tell you how I move around. What's done in the dark comes out the light. Yeah, I love it. If, if that piece don't move the way you want it to move in the dark, just watch that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't check, don't move the piece out the out the scene because the next motherfucker, you're not going to know who it is. <laughs> you don't want no surprises. You just know that's your Judas. Watch that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> That's tight. You want a whole different level then. Did you how long did you do in prison? Five flat. D damn. Did you do any whole time? 2004 to 9. You did some whole time? Huh? You was in the hole at all? I I was at uh Goodyear, Perryville in Arizona. Oh, uh, you did some rough time. But I'm saying, did you go to solitary confinement, the hole? Um, yeah, I did when I threw down the biggest investigation the prison had in 19 years. Damn, you a big, you a big wig. You want some um, John Gotti shit. <laughs> yeah, it was, I, they threw me uh, in the hole for almost two months while they were investigating, but they couldn't prove anything. Did they used to cut up your hot dogs? <laughs> no. <laughs> what kind of shit is that? I heard we didn't, we didn't use dogs. hot dogs. We used shampoo bottles. Oh, uh, I can't compete with no shampoo bottle, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, so when you when you was in the hole, did you like? I, when's your when's your zodiac sign? Taurus. Taurus. So you're just stubborn, huh? Yeah, I'm stubborn as fuck. Are you in your head though? Do you you overthink? Yes. Because I'm just I learned the power of my mind while I was in the hole. Oh, no, I'm, I'm learning it again right now because, you know, starting to learn this stuff, all the confusion. And like you were saying, you know, everybody's coming from different angles. I had to fucking set it down for a few months, too, just to let my mind settle and and and, and sort out what was bullshit from what was good shit, you know? OK, I, le I learned a lot by myself in solitary confinement. That's why I was asking. No, I, I didn't. In fact, I was getting visited every day because they didn't actually throw me in the whole hole. They put me in my own solitary cell and the whole prison was locked down for for Man. like a month and a half. Wow, you were bad. But they girl. would let people out. They took all my tobacco and stuff. But a new a new a new envelope of tobacco you, would come under my door. You're oh, in Arizona God. right now? No, I'm in California at the beach. Okay. Okay, I know that's right. I like Arizona though, but Arizona is magic, but California is magic too. Yeah, I live in San Clemente. I don't know where that's at. It's uh, you know where Camp Pendleton is? Yeah, it's by San Diego. Yeah, Probably. but I, I'm I'm right on the edge, north edge of Camp Pendleton at the beach. Okay, you down there by Tony Hawk and Tori Spelling and them. Uh, I think they're a little bit north. <laughs> you doing? You do it. You doing good then. You left Arizona and went to California. Oh, but it was a process. When I left Arizona, I was a homeless drug addict, and I came up from Man, the street. We all addicts now. We all addicts. Now. <laughs> you know, you just listen, listen. It's not about. It's about abusing things. Okay, if you do too much of anything, you are gonna fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, straight up. You just yeah. can't abuse it. Okay, you can't yeah, abuse moderation. It. Yes. You know, no more shampoo bottles. <laughs> you know, okay, um, uh, uh, can I tell you what the investigation was? Yeah, go uh, ahead. <laughs> Enlighten me. Uh, uh, another girl got jealous because she thought that um, I was having an affair with my uh, officer that I worked for. I was uh, on laundry at, at that time because oh, she shit. was having an affair with him and I was having an affair with him. And he was sneaking me in stuff all the time. And I had <laughs> I, I had three dildos and a, a Costco pack of batteries. And when the investigation went down, we knew it was coming. And I passed it back to him. And he hid, hid it in the warden's um, filing cabinet. 
And in fact, one time we did it on the warden's desk. <laughs> Girl, you need to write a book. <laughs> but they couldn't catch us. They couldn't catch we us for that, nothing. We get that book in all the men's prison. <laughs> <laughs> They couldn't fucking prove anything. And you're good now. You can talk about it now. Oh, yeah. That's fact, your limitations, right? Oh, yeah. But well, I've, I've, already, no I've been banned involved, from right? here. After I left, I tried to fill out a visitation application. They're like, you can never come in this prison. <laughs> what no, what no damaged property assaults, right? You wanted to be choked, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you silly. You're silly. I appreciate you sharing. I needed that smile. <laughs> but she told, hating ass bitch. Told, huh? Yeah. Damn. She was jealous that, uh, like, um, so I was a uh, head of laundry on the yard and on the on the max yard. Or no, this was the when I got down to the uh, second uh, level yard. And um, he would... Um, open up a corner storage room and leave a, a state issue bag in there. And it was where they stored all the toilet paper. And when it was time for lockdown, I would just go slide in there. He put me on the out count. And then I would go make a bed on the boxes of toilet paper with the blankets and pillows and shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, straight up. I like that. I like that. I like stories like that. Because when, when I was locked up, I only heard about the fat nurses fucking up their family. <laughs> That's all I heard, man. Okay, it's here's like, the here, here's the kicker. Guess what his name was? What? Officer Wood. <laughs> <laughs> he still got a job. <laughs> yeah. You should have. He you didn't lose got his job. They ass. <laughs> <laughs> Put a tort claim on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I appreciate you being a real one, though. No problem. I enjoyed go, it. You need to go be a CO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. You need to go be a CO. Get that money. Yeah. You need to go be a federal officer taking tobacco. <laughs> I'm talking about we can get rich. We can get rich. Nice. I will help you. I will help you do this. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. I don't know how he was getting those dildos in. I don't even want to ask. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, but like sometimes I would come to my room and he would hide like uh, chocolates with li liquor inside them under my pillow and stuff. Oh, he's the truth, man. He's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> but you want to know, I never had the luxury of being with a CO, okay? Being with somebody, never, never had sex in prison, okay? <laughs> but... <laughs> there was a CO that I knew in prison one time. Uh -huh. we went to school together. You know, that's a big no-no. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, she didn't tell. She pulled in the room. She was like, she she used to fuck with my cousin. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, Mr. McBride, where do I know you from? <laughs> I'm like, bitch, I don't know you. Look, there's people in the cell. Like, where where we have we have the whole gathered. Yeah. She's like, where do I know you from, Mr. McBride? I'm like, bitch, I do not know you. She's like, you're Samuel's cousin. I'm like, no, I do not know who that nigga <laughs> is. And she started banging up the story where we hug out and shit. I'm like, yeah. that's not me. That's not me. <laughs> she was like, chill, don't worry. I'm not going to tell anybody. Like, bitch, you just told six people in this motherfucker. I don't know who these motherfuckers are. <laughs> There's snitches everywhere like they just did on you. But yeah. I was cool, luckily. They were like, you know her? I'm like, no, I do not. They're like, I would love the fuck. I'm like, I do not know her. <laughs> <laughs> I just stuck with the story. But yeah, I knew her. <laughs> I just did what did to put me somewhere else, though. Because yeah. you know that's what they put you straight in the hole. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that bitch. But all they had to do was look up where we went to school at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. But all of that led you to learning this information. Yep. You should have. So the first thing that stuck in my mind when I started learning this, I'm like, that's why they say we're trustees. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, every you went to state prison. Yeah. Did you get something called state tip? What's that? Like the, the state has to pay you something monthly for working, even if you don't work. No, they don't do that there. 
They don't do it. You was probably in a private prison. Ain't all Arizona private? Perryville in Goodyear. I don't know nothing, I don't know nothing about it. I don't Good, know either, but I know a lot of them are private. It's in Goodyear, Arizona? Yeah. I didn't know they had no prison up there. It's the women's prison. It's the biggest one they got. Oh, shit. I got land in Goodyear. <laughs> Did you? Hey, my record label's in Goodyear, Arizona. Hey, look me up on the Arizona Department of Corrections, 1855-10. I'm good. I'm good. That's I'd my DOC number. I'd rather you send me a photo. I don't want to see a prison picture, girl. <laughs> I'm going to think about is shampoo bottles and dildo. <laughs> you know, we out here in the real world now. Yeah. And I'll, put, I'll put a CO uniform on if that's how you want me to rock. <laughs> you know, I'm going to put a badge on for you, get some handcuffs. <laughs> and just some real game. <laughs> Do you understand your charge? <laughs> <laughs> just say, no, I overstand, officer. Yes, yeah, there you go. <laughs> now assume the position. <laughs> <laughs> Squat and cough and lift up. <laughs> I need to check to make sure you ain't keister or nothing. <laughs> you crazy, girl. You crazy. A little bit. But you so what you working on now? Anything? What do you mean? With the paperwork, anything? Because you, no, I, only heard I, 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 I do with the like paper. your success now. But I now, if you want to, if you want to talk to me, like I said, me, me, and you start getting to know each other. If you want to keep talking to me, I don't want you working. I don't want you. I don't want to be working business. either, man. I want you to create business and then telling motherfuckers what to do. I would love you tell that. People that want to work, what to do? Because people want to work, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you're supposed to be telling them people what to do since you know your name is isn't exactly what the fuck you think it is. Yeah, you direct the people who know that that believe that that they're, they're that name. Only how you're gonna help a a new soul reach a new level is by because pawns they have to be pawns first, right? Uh huh. So all you can do is be a good boss. <laughs> yeah. Hey, because listen, birds of a feather flock together. So if you're the leader, actions speak louder than words. So you're going to help whoever whoever you're around. I would like to, but that's sometimes uh, challenging. <laughs> I mean, no. So actions speak louder than words. You got to remember that. So what's understood don't have to be explained. Okay. So all you got to do is do you continue to work to the top. And then people okay. are going to know what the fuck you know. Hey, I want to... People didn't want to know what I was doing, but I was under a bridge preaching this shit. Didn't nobody want to hear this nigga crazy. Uh huh. Then as soon as I give me some big checks, because I told these motherfuckers what it was. Yeah. Oh, and boom! <laughs> that's then everybody want to know. That's what my dad time. keeps telling me. My dad keeps telling me, "Show me the money." <laughs> you put a lead on his ass and then show him some shit. <laughs> Ain't your dad an attorney? <laughs> yeah. Is he still is he active right now with the no, bar? He's, he's retired now. Oh, I was gonna say you only need three complaints. <laughs> yeah, for real, for real. Uh, you know, he really? might still he might still have his personal law firm open because he always had that open on the side. I don't know. So you show him the money because he knows. Yeah, and he knows how to get the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real. At the end of the day, you got to understand. Listen, so do you know anything about title companies? Yeah, my but, uh, my best friend works for First American National Title Company as an IT employee, and she spent 17 years in that prison with me. Oh, wow. Ask her she who owns she that robbed a title bank. company. Ask her who owns the title company. First American National Title Company is over 125 years old, and they were the first title company established in the United States. You have to be an attorney to run a title company or to own one. Right. Like, you have to be an attorney. So, and when you look at the city and the county's attorney or title companies, they're all they're doing is administering from your birth certificate. He understands that. I've talked to her about that. She knows what I'm your doing. Your dad understands it, too. That's why he <laughs> told you show him the money. Right. That's Because that's the only thing you're missing. <laughs> yep. Hey, for real, how how is it they can put in 
a tax form and get money from they get they're getting paid they're being able to get paid before you you know what i'm saying everybody's able to get paid before you off a of tax form that's correct so that's an application you know yeah, so you th that's money right to... there your your wet signature is money yes yes so you gotta figure out how to fill out the right applications mm -hmm. and you know how to fill it out uh sign it correctly yes now with your last your old job I don't, how long ago did you work at your old job I worked there a year and a half, and then um, how long ago was that? I left the job on June second. So not too long ago. Right, and I worked there a for a year and a half. Are you a you a gangster? No, am I? <laughs> no, I'm. I'm I'm looking for I'm looking for a a form. Which one? This uh, I got the four blog. I'm about to look it up in my uh, in my. Email. <laughs> I want you to see it. I want you to see it because you'll be able to get all that shit back that they already. Because you know, you you said your uh, your old job was playing games. Yeah, they were. To the point you quit. No, actually, I got fired. I had a toxic oh, wow. coworker, and they took his side. They wanted me out because I was ruffling feathers. I, I waited. I waited uh, <laughs> like three months. I waited three months before I filed unemployment, and when I did, they were denying it. And after my interview with the EDD, they filed a counterclaim, and I won. Oh, that's lit! So you got money regardless. Yeah. Do you see this on the screen? Forty-eight fifty-two. Hell yeah! This is this. So this is what's gonna get you all that back. It's oh. Everything you pay. Yeah. I can give you the guy's name too. The guy who showed me this, who does this, he's a tax guy. My tax guy. Uh huh. I'll put his number. I'll send his number to you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I have to do it after the call though. That's fine. Well, you on Instagram? How do you got me? Instagram subscriber, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm your Instagram yeah. sub subscriber and so uh, Miss Chris at, at, at Miss Chrissy too. Okay, so just message me on Instagram. Well, here I'll, I'll, I'll just put my uh, at Miss Chrissy too right here for you. All right. Um. Send you his number, but he'll he'll teach you how to he'll walk you through this. But somehow, for some people, he's able to go back five years. I can only yeah. go back three. I'm about ready to refile uh, amended taxes for the last three years, too. I've been studying that and realized uh, that income uh, is not earnings. And so I'm yeah, going to refile get, all I don't my get taxes. Income. I, don't, I don't get any income. I don't get any income, too, but I just learned that th last year. You know? And, I'm, and I, I got screwed by Obamacare. Do you know what, you know what income means? Yeah, that's wages made by a government employee. No, uh, -uh. no income. That's what I tell the, the when they tell me that's what it means, I tell them that's not what it means to me. I tell them you was doing what you was doing with that CEO, the old girl told, then income the investigation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, B four two plus two B four, don't it? Yes. Yeah, we don't speak the same language, Your Honor. <laughs> That's how I talk to him. You feel me? Yes. All right. I didn't mean to cut you off though. No, I, I've, I'm sure I've cut you off a couple of times too. No, 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 no bet. Big deal. Oh, you can never cut me off. You're the latest person I talk to all day. <laughs> Thank I you. I wish everybody was would tell the truth like you. You might they might get along part of their life. Right. Everybody's trying to hide something. I don't know why. You didn't learn shit, prison. <laughs> <laughs> I was stressing on my baby mama. Really? Was there getting picked down. <laughs> <laughs> and the officer still got his job. But look, so yeah. I just know that anytime somebody, all they have to do is say something. Yeah. In the women's prison, and everybody gets under investigation. Yep. That's horrible. It's not like that in the men's prison. 
Hey, let me tell you what, though. Uh, they were looking for those dildos because they found a package in, in a storage room where he handed it to me and he didn't go back and get it and throw it away. And and the uh, guy, he was a he used to be a, a, a Vietnam veteran that was interrogating me. He was an asshole. And they bring me up to the big fucking beer uh, table every day while the prison was locked down while I was in handcuffs trying to drill me with questions and he throws this package on the table he goes what is this I said I looked at the package it was kind of clear with black printing on it he says it's a back massager so what and, and he goes where is it I was like I don't know what color is it how big is it what does it look like <laughs> yeah, that's funny and then, and then at the end, I said, I, I had just seen the truck come in to clean out the porta potties. And I asked him, Did you check the porta potties? <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. They were hey. digging, they were digging in the dirt on both sides of the building. <laughs> Is this true? Everybody in the women's prisons on their period at the same time? No, it ain't true at all. <laughs> I heard that like, y'all cycles go on the same. No, only only if you're close with a few females, then probably it's the same cycle, you know. So that's not true. No, I heard women's prisons are nasty. No, they're not. In fact, the no. women are just they're they're we are anal about keeping the the everything clean. And I'll tell you what, if you get a new bunkie and they don't know how to clean that fucking floor right, they're gonna get their ass beat. Okay. You, you swipe all the way down. You do not, like, go back and forth, you know, and spread the shit around. You wasn't with any girls. You was just with guys. No, 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 no. I had I had girlfriends, believe me. Uh, you who had do you think I was sharing so them was doing? Pimping? Who do you, you think I was sharing them with? Huh? You was pimping in prison? <laughs> you said you had girlfriends, plural. Yeah, yeah. So you was pimping. Oh yeah. <laughs> and and I, had no, it in, so. I had it in so good with the officers that I could switch rooms to be with the girl that I wanted to sleep with for the night. And we would just, you know, because on uh, uh, you, night, you was you was calling shots. You was shot calling. <laughs> hey girl, so look, the same thing you was doing in here, you gotta do out here in the real world. Thank That's you. What the government does, you know. Yeah. So look. <laughs> Here's the rules. You ready? Here's the rules. You, if it's not paying you or laying you, then it's playing you. Yeah. There ain't no ends and us about it. You know, that's the rules. If it's not laying you, if it's not paying you, then it's playing you. They don't deserve a spot in your life. Right. And that's how you got to be out here in the real world. Businesses. Listen, I see why. Listen, I didn't know all this little backstory. I see why W A B E N ain't shit to you. No, <laughs> <laughs> nigga, that's just one little piece of paper. You out here getting it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't need no paperwork for this side hustles, did you? No. Because that's that private life. That's private business, right there. Yeah. You know and it's their If y'all had some NDAs, if y'all would have had some NDAs, non-disclosure. No what went down? They would have to stop the investigation. Here's the right. non-disclosure. Agreement. Right. You can have that in prison. Yeah. Oh, that's all it is. People sign promissory notes and uh, record contracts every day in prison. Yeah. So you know the private life and the public life. You was already living that private life, so it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, you don't need no paperwork, but you know you want to put them under some type of agreement where they can't talk. That old girl that try to snitch. You know. The next time something like that happens, you have one of your henchmen go ahead and get their shank out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just play it. This should be a recorded. <laughs> I know it is. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing too. <laughs> theoretically. Theoretically. Right. Non disclosure. <laughs> right. NDAs. NDAs. NDAs is the fact. No refunds. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so that's that private life that's the private sector and that's how we gotta move you know just like you shared that that's how you gotta move out here you know whoever you decide to work for the government don't need their fucking piece of your labor before the fuck you do how are they gonna get paid before you 
Right. I didn't see you them know? working at my job doing my job. <laughs> Man, but this explains a lot, though. So, because you know, no, normal females are not just going to try to, hey, you're not taking taxes out my check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? Who does that? You don't know nobody else that does that, do you? I do because I'm Don Kalab, but I'm saying you. <laughs> yeah, I did it. <laughs> So you did it, but you, you don't. There's not people around you that's doing it, right? No, absolutely not. And if I when I what I've only mentioned it to like two people, and they don't even understand what I'm talking about. So you didn't get no moral support. No. So if you was looking for external validation, you would have never done it. <laughs> <laughs> if you was looking for physical external validation from mom, dad, some of my close brothers, I sister, can't. Friends, I can't. So, but you did it because you felt in your heart that it was yes. Right. They don't support so me in any of this. always pay attention to your intuition. Yeah. Because your intuition is even bigger and better than the world. It holds answers that the world can't even answer for you. It holds answers that Google can't even possibly answer for you. You understand? I completely agree. So when you when so what you praise, you raise. So when you're being grateful for that, you're gonna always continue to harness that intuition, that power right there, because you have a great intuition. Thank you. It's speaking loud, loud as fuck to you. To, <laughs> no, I'm gonna do this shit. <laughs> I even me before I became Don, I had to become Don Kalam to get brave enough to I had to create a whole alter ego to get brave enough to stand up to the government and to stand up to say, no, y'all not gonna do this shit. Yeah. You know, because I knew Don Kalam was a business. If anything, blame it on Don Kalam. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying for real. But at the end of the day, that's what taught me because under Jeffrey, Jeffrey wasn't doing this shit. At least you yeah. did it as Christine. Jeffrey went, uh-uh. Ain't doing that shit with me and my social fuck. Nah, nigga. <laughs> Straight up. So, you know, but you know, I can't, I, I undercame a, a status change when I took my Shahada. I became a more and that's what went down. So, I, I've been Malik Kalam, Don Kalam ever since. Jeffrey McBride Bay. I'm a man of many names, but I just make sure I don't go by that government. <laughs> yeah. And I won't let them call me a number. I'll never let a motherfucker take my picture, book me in, nothing. Because they're not entitled to that. All that's voluntary. You volunteered to take the picture, right? Mm hmm. You never seen an Amish mugshot, have you? No. That's why they don't go to jail. You I love those motherfuckers. They they got it right and they kept it right since the beginning. Yes, what I refuse, listen, the longest they ever kept me is three days when I refuse to give up any information and go into booking. Like, you're not going to get a bond, idiot. Yeah. Oh, shit, my, my word is my bond. My <laughs> voice. I wasn't, I wasn't spitting it like I am now. I'm like, it's my right. I'm like, my word is my bond. Fuck you. So now I'm going in there like, fuck you, pussy. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to put liens on you and your dog and the <laughs> shit that comes with your dog ass. I'm taking family photographs. I'm taking iPhones. I'm taking toenail clippers. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, nigga. I'm taking it all. Keep playing with me. What's your badge number, nigga? What binding company are you with, motherfucker? You know, you can't really say that to a CEO because he could take that badge off and beat your ass, nigga. Then put the badge back on. You know that's legal. They can do that shit. Yeah. As long as they ain't walk, wearing their badge, they can walk in that motherfucking cell and beat your ass. <laughs> yeah. You want me to take the badge off, punk? Like, yeah. <laughs> At your own risk. <laughs> right. At your own risk. But I hope you had an enlightened conversation. All right. You, you was the only one that showed up on the Zoom. So oh, I just gave you I've had attention. so much fun. I really love this. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm going to send you that tax information for that 4852 as well. Let me know if you need any books too, because I'll send you a book or whatever that you well, want. I'm, I'm the girl that already posted. I have 80 of your books. And yes, I will let you know if there's another one I need. I appreciate you. Yeah, I love you. I was, listen, I'll send you one physically too. Just let me know. I'll send you one physical and oh. ebook. Okay. But no, you rocked it out a whole hour for me. You shared your story for me. You're funny as a motherfucker. <laughs> I know it was true. I know it was true, but that shit's funny. <laughs> yeah, 118551. Oh, there you go. There's my DOC number for Arizona. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> there you go. There you go. Send me your email. I'll send you a copy of this call in the chat. All right. I love you. <laughs> All right. Love you too. Much peace and love. Peace and love. Grand rising tomorrow. Love you. <laughs> love you too. Are you ready to unlock the secrets of commerce and build an empire that lasts for generations? Look no further. Introducing Million Dollars Worth of Game by Don Kalam, your official guide to the private and public side of commerce. In this groundbreaking book, Don Kalam reveals the strategies and insider knowledge you need to create and protect your wealth. Learn how to navigate the intricate world of commerce, master the art of building an empire, and secure a lasting legacy for your family. Get your hands on million dollars worth of game today and embark on a transformative journey toward financial abundance. Don't miss out on the opportunity to build your empire and secure a prosperous future for generations to come. Get ready to conquer the world of commerce. Million Dollars Worth of Game by Don Kalam, your ultimate guide to building an empire and leaving a legacy. Million Dollars Worth of Game by Don Kalam. Available now. Get your copy and start your journey to generational wealth.